Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. My name is Brent and in today's video we're going to go ahead and cover 7 stocks to watch in June of 2021. It has been a while since I've made these styles of videos so if you do enjoy these styles of video let me know down in the comment section below you know what did you enjoy what did you not enjoy give this video a thumbs up of course if this is something that you do like seeing more often and we can definitely try and squeeze some of these in on a month by month basis so with that said in this video we're going to go ahead and cover seven dividend stocks that have been growing and paying out dividends from anywhere from one year up to 48 years of dividend growth now these are sorted from the least amount of years paid out to the greatest amount of years paid out. But besides that, they're not sorted in any other order. I do believe that all of these offer some sort of a you know, fair value. They've kind of pulled back off of their highs, but they still have rising fundamentals, you know, financial fundamentals that still make them really attractive to invest in, especially if you're investing for the long term. So with that said, if you are brand new to my channel, have not yet subscribed, Go down below, hit the red button to subscribe, make it gray, hit the bell to be notified every time I release a brand new video. And of course, give this video a thumbs up, make it blue. It lets me know that you enjoy this style of video, lets others see this video as well, helps out the algorithm. And overall, of course, I really appreciate it. So with that said, let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, we're going to go ahead and kick it off by taking a look at stock number one, which is Qualcomm, ticker symbol QCOM. This has been growing and paying out dividends for the past one year. So, you know, nothing to sneeze at there. Hasn't been growing and paying out very much. But Qualcomm does, you know, you may have, you probably have a phone that probably has one of their chipsets in it. So Qualcomm designs, develops, and supplies semiconductors and collects royalties on wireless handheld devices. And they hold a ton of ta technology patents. In addition, Qualcomm provides system software and components to wireless hand handsets, vendors, and promotes applications and services that run on high-speed wireless networks. So this company operates in two segments, CDMA technologies and technology licensing. So they have their segments split up here. So here, they make the majority of their cash from phone chipsets. So if you have a, you know, iPhone, maybe an Android, you know, different phones out there have these chipsets inside of them that lets them function. So in this case, Qualcomm makes up 67.55 or $126.7 billion of their revenue from mobile phone chipsets. Now, the, you know, the majority of the remaining portion comes in at 27.66% from their mobile phone royalties, so $51.9 billion. So they probably have some partners out there, and as long as they have these chipsets within them and they're out in the market, they collect some sort of royalties from these businesses that they do business with. And of course, they have some other little miscellaneous income as well, which is about $9 billion, or makes up roughly 4.79% of their total business there now market cap wise it's at 146.81 billion dollars so you know it's still a large cap i believe it's a, it's considered a large cap stock but not a mega it's 52 week range this is where i kind of wanted to get stocks that are kind of in the you know in the middle they're not trading at near 52 week highs they're not trading near 52 week lows these are all kind of in line from their lows and their highs so right now Qualcomm is priced roughly $130.15. $130 I, I gathered all of this data on Sunday, which is about three days ago, so that would put it at the 16th of May, 2021. So on Wednesday, it, these stocks could be higher, could be lower, but we'll go ahead and check it out. So has a low of $74.37, which is almost double the price where it's at now, and has a high of $167.94. It's one year price change, is actually down 5.33% from one year ago. So th the chart right here, I believe is that is not a one year. I don't have the one year. This is the three year right here from 2018 to 2021. And this is a three month area. So, you know, the one year, I still wanted to include it just to kind of showcase that, you know, from one year ago, we're in May of 2021, the market had been slowly recovering. You know, it's off and down by 5.33% percent now it's currently priced at 130 15 cents it does pay out two dollars and 72 cents per share each year 
It currently puts that at a starting dividend yield of roughly 2% there, right there. It's priced the book, you know, this isn't an asset-based company, so it's priced the book is at a 19.77. I don't believe that's, you know, I don't really pay attention to price the book in sales-driven companies. You know, price to sales is at a 5.08. So it still is a little high you know it's not out of value you would generally look at anything that's sales driven to be at a price of sales of anything from three to lower you know price the book that's really good for financials where they have a lot of assets in their management but here in this case they probably don't have a ton of assets themselves and it's more of a sales driven company so it's not high high you know really super high it's at a five and it's forward pe is at a 16.69 Versus currently with the S&P 500, I believe that their forward PEs like at a 25, 26, or you know, somewhere in that range, and currently PE is at 30. So, you know, nearly half of the S&P 500 right here for their forward PE. Now, as far as analysts, Morningstar has them at a hold of a price target of 136, updated back in April 28th of 2021. CFRA it has them as a hold with a price target of 160 dollars. From anywhere from zero to 12 months and this was just reported out and published back on the 15th of may 2021 so either way you know both of the analysts here predicted it to be slightly higher than where it's trading at now here we have their three-year chart so from three years ago where have their financials gone here in the in the purple we have their price over the past three years it's up 12 126 point eight percent so uh, you know, 12 by 3, that's 42% on average over the last three years. We have their revenue is in the orange up 43%. That's really nice. You divide that by three, you're going to get something what, like at a 13.333, whatever uh, percent there, average growth for their revenue. And in the blue, they have their earnings per share up 70%. So that's a nice steady upwards trajectory, especially where we have been over the past several years you know business is still booming their earnings per share is projected to be higher in the blue it's still moving ticking higher their net income is ticking higher revenue ticking higher but their price did pull back which just means that they probably overshot so here we can see over the past three months we have their 50-day moving average at a 133.78 200-day moving average at a 134.59. They had broke below their 200-day, 50-day moving average, hit their past, you know, March 21 support, bounced, and are currently trending upwards at the moment. So they do have some sort of a support here at that 130 mark. And, you know, if they can break above, break above their 250-day moving average and kind of tick back higher, this company definitely has that growth. But if you're buying it long term, you're locking in starting yield of 2% and some really good upwards trajectory, especially with the growing business in all three areas, you know, revenue, income and earnings per share for the future. So that is ticker symbol QCOM Qualcomm. OK, next, we're going to go ahead and discuss Apple. You know, Apple has been growing and paying out dividends for the past eight years. Apple, of course, if you don't know, they design, manufacture and market consumer electronics and computer. You know, they're most known for their iPhones, iPads and other Mac devices. So revenues are derived from their iPhone line of smartphones, services, hardware sales, Macintosh, families of notebooks, desktop computers and so much more. Other, You know, I, 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 iPad tablets and wearables. Now, Apple used to just be known for their iPhones, but they have other services that are slowly growing. Their services here is growing really nicely. I believe just a few years ago, it was making up, I believe like five or 8%. Now it's making up nearly 24%. So this is a nicely growing number. And that's why Apple has been able to go from a trillion dollar company one year ago to become over, you know, $2 trillion here in 2021. So iPhone make up 42.23% of their revenue services make up 23.94. So that's nearly a trillion dollars alone. It's $984 billion from their iPhones. That's nearly a trillion dollars of their cash comes straight from iPhones services makes up 558 billion peripherals and other products 351 billion or 15 percent max 184 billion at 7.89 ipads 171.3 billion at 7.34 and they have a 
you know, $82 billion on their cash balance. So they're sitting at 4% cash, they're 3.5% cash right there. So half of their Macs, half of their iPads is just being held there in cash. So pretty crazy overall, you know, crazy cash cow. Now market cap, Apple, as we kind of discussed, it's sitting at a $2.13 trillion market cap. It's 52 week range is at $75.05 to $145.09. So again, it has pulled back off that high. You know, it hasn't dropped to that low. It definitely has some support in there, as we'll discuss here in just a second. Its one-year price change is up 64.9%. So from one year ago till today, it's up roughly 65%. It's currently priced at 127.45. It may have changed here over the last three days. They pay out 88 cents per share for the whole year, which puts them at a starting dividend yield of only 0.66%. So this isn't a company that you would buy for, you know, dividend income for cash flow. This is just something you would buy for long-term belief that this company will continue to grow in their price and their market cap, you know, 2.13 trillion dollar market cap, you know, will it double to become, you know, a four trillion dollar company over the next several years that'll double up their cash, uh, their price, you know, who knows with Apple as they continue to grow out that services area. Price to book is pretty high at a 30.74, but again, this is a sales driven company. So we're looking at that price of sales at a 6.73. So kind of in line with where, Qualcomm was at, you know, Qualcomm was at a five, Apple's at a 6.73. Their PE has shot up through the roof in these last few years. Just a few years ago, I think two or three years ago, PE ratio on Apple was sitting at a 10 or a 13, very low versus right now, their forward PE is at a 24.69. So forward, you know, right now, I think they're at a 27, 28, you know, even a 30 with the market. But their forward is still really high at nearly a 24.69. But Morningstar has them at a hold at $115. So that's under where they're currently priced at. And CR, uh, CFRA has them as a buy with a price target of 160 over the next 0 to 12 months. And this is again just published a few days ago back on the 15th of May 2021. I feel like, you know, I'm invested quite a bit in Apple as as well. I have Apple throughout different portfolios and of course held within ETFs. And you know, it makes up a good portion of anyone's portfolio if they're invested in ETFs. So I don't think Apple is going anywhere and their iPhone, they're pretty stable. They're still doing a whole rotation. You know, I've had an iPhone 6 for years up until this year i have an iphone 12 now that i just upgraded to just because you know i'm not going to be taking advantage of the 5g because that's not rolled out everywhere but it i usually hold on to my iphone from anywhere from three to five years if not longer until there's a big rotation and right now we're getting in the beginning of the rotation of these iphones and i believe over the next two to three years we'll still see quite a bit of iphone sales getting bumped up. So I think iPhone sales will still continue to be a big factor, if not even more in the future, as everyone's kind of flipping from their, you know, six, seven, eight, nines. I don't even know if there was nines out there. So, you know, I saw the iPhone six all the way to a 12. So that was a big jump. Uh, let's see. This is their three year. So price change over the past three years up 19, 195%. So 19 by three, that's at a six point something percent, 60% uh, on average per year over the past three years. The revenue in the orange up 30. So about, you know, revenue up 10% on average per year, we'll say. In the blue, we have their earnings per share at a 50, 50% 50 over the past three years. So that's really nice on their earnings per share. And in the green, we have their net income up 35.98% over the past three years. So, you know, really good growth there over the past three years. And it's, you know, once you get to this size, it, it you know, your numbers start to kind of, your numbers are really large, but they're not going to be three digits. You know, revenue at 26% earning or net income at 35% and earnings per share at 50% over the past three years. You know, that's really good for a company this size and their prices continue to skyrocket. You know, this could still pull back, but you know, estimates of 160 over the next 12 months. 
Now here we have their price at 127.45. We have their dividend yield really low at a 0.66%. We have their 200 day moving average at 123.28. We can see that their price came down all the way to their 200 day moving average, hit it and bounced right off of it at 123.28. It recently broke above its 50 day moving average. So if it can stay above, 50 day will probably act as support and will continue to trending higher. But if it, you know, I have to take a look at where it's at now. But I think right now with the market, we're seeing a lot of red. So that could kind of, you know, if we trend sideways with Apple, that may act as support. Or if we do break again, we may hit that 200 day moving average. As long as it kind of consistently stays here, I think it has much more upside potential in the future versus downside potential because their company in itself is just going to continue to grow. You know, it's not going to. You know, one day you know, their services aren't going to go away. People are still going to be using their services. iPhones, I think that's still going to be really strong over the next at least, you know, one to two years. I believe iPhone sales will continue to stay strong. And Mac and iPad aren't anything crazy. That's 14% there alone. And peripherals and other products, you know, people are going to be. I still haven't bought the dongle attachment for my iPhone 12. So they gave me the new plug. You know, every other year they're changing their plugs. So. <laughs> They're going to get people with that. Okay, so that is Apple Inc. Ticker symbol AAPL, eight years of dividend growth. Next up, we have Merck & Co. Uh, Merck & Company, ticker symbol MRK. This has been growing and paying out dividends for the past 11 years. Merck is a global pharmaceutical company focused on discovering, developing, and marketing drugs and respiratory immune immunology. Oh, I can't say that word. <laughs> immunology cardiovascular, diabetes, infectious diseases, oncology, and other indications. So, you know, they do a, a whole bunch of not only on developing and marketing drugs, but also other areas there of healthcare. This company is a global leader in vaccines and further diversified with animal health divisions. So pretty crazy. We can see that vaccines make up 16.44% of their overall business. So you know, with everything that's going out there in the world right now, that makes up 16%. Their oncology makes up 44.51% or $123 billion. Diversified brands in women's health is 33.7 at 12.10%. Animal health and other makes up 29.4 billion at 10.56. And hospital acute care makes up 14 billion at 5%. So really diversified. Oh wait, actually we have more. Diabetes makes up 4.38% at 12.2 billion. Immune and neuroscience makes up 8 billion at 2.87. Cardiovascular makes up 7.7 .7 billion at 2.76. And virology makes up 3.8 billion at 1.36. So they are very diversified as far as having capital coming in from all sorts of areas. And it's in a healthcare area, meaning that these services, these products, these, you know, what they do isn't going to be going anywhere. You know, people aren't all of a sudden not going to be buying whatever they're selling. You know, they're going to need it. Just going to happen regardless with the human body. Market cap is sitting at 188.2 billion. 52 week range is traded at a $71.72 to $87.10. So we have about $7 to the downside and about $10 to the upside. One year price from one year ago is down 2.26%. So they're currently priced at $78.29. They pay out $2.60 per share for the year. They're priced the book at as a 7.36. So again, not a big asset based company, I don't believe, but they, you know, price of the book is still fairly low at a 7.36 and their price, the sales is fairly good here at a 4.14. Their four PE is also at a 12.10. This would be something you'd probably want to compare over to an AVI, which I don't have a comparison at the moment. You know, that'd be kind of an interesting video. I do own both AVI and if you watch my Monday video, I recently added Merck to the portfolio. So I recently added it into my portfolio after having done some research, seeing how diversified they were, seeing the current valuation, but Morningstar has them at a price target of 100 bucks. That just came out back on the 10th of May, 2021. CRNA 
also has them at a buy target of $90 over the next 0 to 12 months. And again, this report was just made here on the 15th of May. So over the past three years, since back in 2018, their price has changed. Price hasn't really gone anywhere. It's up 25.08% over the past three years. So 25 by three, that's a little over 8% on average per year. That's pretty good growth there for a pharma company. We have their revenue in orange up 16.6%. So that's at a little over 5% on average per year for their revenue. We have their earnings at 36% by three. I'm not sure, you know, what's that? 36 by three is 12. So 12% 12 on average per year over the last three years. That's pretty good growth there for the earnings per share. And it's still continuing to trend higher here going into 2021. Their net income looks like it had dropped recently over the trailing 12 months. But I think that this number gets thrown off with earnings. It's the trailing 12 months. So quarter over quarter over quarter, it gets reported in here in 2021. Maybe the quarter hadn't came out yet when this when the data got gathered or it's not reporting here on, on Y chart. So, uh, you know, I don't take that big drop yet. You know, I'll have to see how, how 2021 completely plays out. Now, price is at $78.29. You can see here that it has traded below its 50-day 200 moving average for quite a while. It's been building up some support down here in the $73 range. Kind of hitting double bottom right here, picking back up. Retesting, didn't hit as low, picked it back up, and it's currently trending higher. If it can break above that 200-day moving average of $79.58, which is really near, I, I believe that today, Looking at it on Wednesday, I think it did trend above 79.58. So if it can continue to move higher and then hold that support, I believe that Mark will kind of recover and potentially move back towards where the you know the analysts expect at 90 anywhere from 90 to 100 dollars. Any either way, you know when you're buying into Mark, you're buying into a company that's heavily diversified. It offers a roughly 3.22% starting yield and Long term wise, it's not going anywhere. It's strong. It has rising revenue, earnings, net income. So that is Mark, ticker symbol MRK. Next up, we have Clorox, ticker symbol CLX. This one's been growing and paying out dividends for the past 19 years. So here we're going into some heavier companies here. Clorox, of course, is a diversified manufacturer and marketer of household products, specialty food items, and pet care, uh, pet items. So they're well known for items including Tylex, Liquid Plumber, Volro 9, Pine Soul, King Ford, and many others there. You can go ahead, you know, burpees are one that we've used for quite a while just because now we have two children and my wife really likes the burpees, baby powder, the chapstick, all sorts of little products that they do offer, and many other, you know, cleaning supplies Clorox also offers that as well. Here, market cap is sitting at a $22.5 billion, which isn't, you know, it's not tiny, but it's not gigantic in comparison to some of the other ones that are out there. It's holding steady. Its 52-week range is at a 176, 73 to 239. So it got highly inflated over the past year. You can see a huge run-up, you know, when this thing eh, back in 2020 Kind of got crazy. Everyone rushed the stores. We're buying up all sorts of antibacterial and, you know, all sorts of those products. You know, price got, you know, shot through the roof there because uh, they believed that there would be really high demand. And there was. But, you know, that drove up their net income, drove up their revenue, drove up their earnings. But here they're kind of coming back down, back to normal. So that price kind of shot back down. But I believe that they kind of maybe shot too far down. So we'll kind of cover that here in just a second. So one year price change is down 12.09% just from one year ago. So here back in 2020, it probably May of 2021 would probably put it right about here. So since this date, they are down 12.09%. So they're currently priced at $181.32. They currently pay out $4.44 per share each quarter. That puts them at a starting yield of roughly 2.45%. Their price to book is pretty high at a 30.35%. But again, this is Clorox. This is a business that sells products. It's a sales driven company. So that price the book, not too important in this. What we're looking at here is the price to sale. So this is sitting at a nice 3.08%. So I would say, you know, using these numbers and I've seen others use this as well, price to sales of a 
or lower is usually fairly good for any of these sales driven companies. Forward PE, uh, kind of high here at a 20.36. I've seen a couple other YouTubers compare Lorox to, I believe, an Apple. When we looked at Apple, I think that they also had a 24.69%, uh, 24 forward PE, you know, and they were doing a comparison. But you can't really compare two different industries, two different styles. So here you would have to compare Clorox to other, you know, businesses within the same sector. Overall, we can see here, I don't actually have their PE history, but I know over the past several years, their PE has remained pretty consistent from anywhere from 15 to 20. So it's not, I, I do believe that this is kind of high, you know, forward P at a 23.36, it's not as high as the S&P 500, but overall, not anything quite crazy, expensive. Uh, Morningstar has them as a price target of 171, which is actually lower than where they're at right now. They're at a 130, 181. So they have them at a 171. So that would be actually negative. And that was just released back on the 10th of May. And CFR, CFRA has them as a rating as a buy at a price target of $210. And this was just reported back on the 15th of May. So this one, this is the first one of the few that we've covered where one analyst has them, you know, nearly what, 20 bucks lower, no, 10 bucks. I'm doing my math wrong there. And then CFRA has them as a price target of nearly $30 higher. So one of these is going to be correct. One of these is going to be wrong here over the past three years, their price has moved 27.7%. We'll go ahead and say that's 30. So that gives you about roughly a 10% average return over the past 10 years. Even after they came down off those highs, they're roughly putting out a 10% on average return over the past 10 years. And if you go over the last 10 years, we'll cover that data here towards the end of the video. Earnings per share has ticked lower here recently going into 2021. That's because, you know, everyone that went out there and bought these Clorox products are storing them. Actually, after last year's, you know, toilet frenzy and other cleaning supply products, you couldn't, you know, online, they were selling cleaning supplies, hand sanitizer, toilet paper, just at outrageous prices. So, uh, you know, earnings coming down here in 2021, uh, you know, that makes sense. And that's why their price has came down. But I think long term, I think it still offers something of a good buying opportunity, especially if you're buying and holding for the long term. Again, Clorox is another company I added to my portfolio. This wasn't one that I had uh, long term over the past three years, this is just something that I've recently added to my portfolio. Earnings per share, we already kind of covered that. In the orange, they're at 15.42% for their revenue. This is a very slow, you know, it's a it's a diversified manufacturer of household products. So it's not going to be anything crazy. So their revenue is moving up roughly 5% on average per year, which I think that's really good growth for the revenue of a company such as this. And in the green, we have their net income. We'll just say again, 15%. That's about 5% on average for their net income growth over the past three years. Even they, in, you know, even though they've had this big pullback here in 2021, I think that's still really good for a company such as Clorox. Here, this is a little three-month chart. So their 200-day moving average is pulled back really hard again. You know, they came off that high of $240. So their 200 day simple moving average is at 202 and their 50 day moving average is at 188.60. So they're currently trading here at that 181.32. They are trading both below 50 day, 200 day moving averages. They have hit a bottom back in March of 2021 of about $180 and some change and they bounced off of it here they're retesting it retesting that support bounced off of it again uh, hit the 50-day moving average it acted as resistance and they're retesting it again at 181.32 so this is kind of trending kind of building some momentum or their next quarter will kind of you know i believe that their next quarter depending on how that goes you know hitting or missing they're going to stay consistent. People are going to buy their products. They're going to need their products. They're not going to need as much of them, you know, hoarding style, but it's still going to be the products that they do sell are going to be ones that, you know, buyers are going to buy regardless of, you know, what year it is. So pretty diversified there in itself. So that is 
Florox, ticker symbol CLX, which has been growing and paying out dividends for the past 19 years. Next, we have Nextera Energy, ticker symbol NEE. This has been growing and paying out dividends for the past 26 years. Nextera Energy consists of two main businesses, the Florida Power and Light Regulated Utility and the Energy Resources, a deregulated generator of predominantly wind, natural gas, nuclear, and solar-powered assets in North America. They also hold 65% share in Yieldco Nextera Energy. Their market cap is at 143 billion, 52-week range. Is at a low of 55.80 to a high of 87.69. So again, they're currently priced at $73.12, kind of splat in the middle. Their one-year price change is up 25.89% as prices across the board for you know any sort of you know natural or non-natural material. You know those prices have just increased in general. So their price on the stock market has gone up 25.89%. They currently pay out $1.54 per share each year, which puts them at a 1.96% starting yield. Their price to book, you know, asset. This is an asset-based company. They have a ton of assets out there that are just on their books. So they have generators, they have, uh, what are they called, windmills, natural gas facilities, nuclear and solar powered buildings. So they're an asset based company. So price to book here is sitting at a 3.84, which is pretty, um, you know, in that value range. Price of sales, not not too important. They're more of an asset driven company. They hold assets on their book. Uh, so that's a 3.84. Price to sales is at an 8.42. Forward PE is pretty high at a 29.09. So this is the only number here that's kind of like really high at a 29.09. I would have to take a look at their history, you know, over the past several years. What is their PE for this for this specific sector for this company? First, you want to look at it history-wise for the company. How, you know, over the past five years, what does their PE generally trade at? And then other areas, you know, other companies in this field, they're pretty green. You know, they're uh, as companies are moving to be more green. Again, this is wind, natural gas, nuclear, and solar-powered assets. So it's a very green-style business. So, you know, people are probably buying into it just because regulation is coming down hard for any of those companies that are not moving to be green in here. Uh, maybe that's just, you know, price wise. That's why they kind of been bumping up. Earnings is pretty consistent with any utility companies. They, they're they not going to overcharge you. They're going to stay consistent, maybe increase their prices on a year by year basis by anywhere from two to 10 percent. And it's not going to be anything crazy, whereas their price can fluctuate very hard as investors you know, feel that this company is going to be going anywhere from anywhere from two to five years and investors start kind of piling into it for the future, kind of driving up the P.E. ratio. Morningstar has them at a hold at $75 price target, which is just slightly from where they're at now. CFRA has them also at a buy with a price target for the next zero to 12 months of $90. So that, both those reports are put out here in April and May. Here, over the past three years, the price changed up 76.92%. So 80 by 3, what is that number? That's a little, what, 2.4, 2.3% on average per year. Not anything crazy there over the past three years. Oh, 20, 23. 23% average return for your price over the past three years. That's pretty good. Okay, uh, revenue in the orange up six percent. Again, it's a utility company. Their their revenue, their net income isn't going to be, and their earnings aren't going to be shooting up in the skies just because it is a regulated area. It's a regulated utility, so they're going to be regulated by the government as to far as how much they can charge, how often they can increase their prices, how much they can increase their prices. So, you know, staying consistent with their earnings per share up 19. percent 96%. Their revenue is up 6%, and their net income is down 50.26%. So this is probably something. If you are taking a look deeper dive into next era, it looks like back in January uh, 2019, their net income started to go down, and they are starting to pick it back up. You can see a little bit of an incline here for their net income. So maybe they had something on the balance sheets that they were writing off, which kind of drove down their net income overall. Maybe they had some acquisition. Of here, they hold a 65% share of Yield Co. Next Era. So maybe they were kind of writing that off on the books that drove their net income down 50%. So that could be something to take a look at if you're taking a look at Next Era Energy. 
Here, over the past three months, their price has broke below 280 50-day moving average. You can see that it has bounced back in March of 2021, uh, you know, hit lows of, say, $70, retested it twice, bounced off of it as support, hit a high of 81 breaking above its 250-day moving average, hit that $81 mark. And maybe with earnings here recently, I know earnings were kind of going out, and they put out some earnings, people didn't like it, kind of dropped the price back down, but it's bouncing off the support level of $70. So here, if you're picking it up, you're both below that 50-day, 200-day moving average, you're locking in annually 2% starting range. And this one probably has the potential to rebound back over its 50-day, 200-day moving average. It doesn't look like it has any sort of issues breaking above, you know, there's no sort of resistance here you'll see it hits here and then uses that 200 day moving average of support and it kind of bounces higher hitting that 80 dollar price uh price point so you could probably buy into this one for example hold it for the long term and you'll probably see it hit back up to the 80 dollar price target uh you know or even higher at 90 dollars uh, per crfa so that is ticker symbol nee that is next era energy with 26 years of growing and paying out dividends Next up, this is our second to the last one. This is Walmart, ticker symbol WMT, 47 years of growing and paying out dividends. You know, Walmart, I don't think needs any introduction. They're the largest retailer company in the United States and internationally as well. They even have businesses operating over in Argentina, Brazil, Canada, China, Japan, Mexico, and the United Kingdom. So Walmart in the US makes up 71, we'll just say 72% of their business. Walmart internationally makes up 22%. Their Sam's Club, a small area, it makes up roughly 5.4%. So, you know, most of their market, you know, $322 billion is here in the United States. And Walmart, I think everyone has a Walmart, you know, at least a couple cities within them. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. Uh, market cap is sitting at $392.5 billion. Their 52 week range is at a low of 117 a high of 153. So again, they're splat right in the middle. Their one-year change is up 13.21%. They're currently priced at 139.52. They pay out $2.20 per share each year. That puts them at a price, price the book. You know, they have a ton of assets as well, but again, they're sales driven. So here you're looking kind of at two numbers. They have a ton of assets with how many buildings. I don't think they lease their buildings. I think they buy it themselves. That would be something to kind of look at, but price the book at a 4.8 isn't anything that is bad when they're more of a sales driven company. So sales wise, they're at a 0 0.71. So they're currently priced in comparison to their sales is actually lower. So this is actually pretty good. I would have to take a look at their history of their price of sales. Does it generally trade this low? Or is this just, you know, kind of a steal of a deal with its valuation? It's forward PE is at a 25.63. You know, Walmart in itself is fairly fairly safe you know you're not gonna you know walmart no people are not gonna stop going to walmart i have a walmart right down the street that we do quite a bit of our shopping at it's either walmart trader joe's or that's pretty much where we shop at so it just really depends on where we're at and when we remember we need something <laughs> but for pe is at a 25.63 morningstar has them at a price target of 124 and CFRA has them at a price target of 145. So again, they're doing devil's advocate. One is against it, one is for it. Both of these reports came out here in May, back on May 10th and May 15th. Over the past three years, we can see price is up 55%. That is roughly uh, 20, a little under 20% on average for the year. Walmart revenue is up 3%. So that's a little over, what, 1.3% on the revenue growth over the last three years on average. So 1.3% on average over the past three years. Earnings per share at a 15. So that's about 5%, a little over for their earnings per share. That's pretty good for a, for a super center, like a retailer company. And their price is up 55%, 60. Uh, we already kind of covered that. And that's it come up here. So Really nice net income growth there at 161. Even after they kind of pulled back, you know, during this whole 2020, they probably had everyone, you know, with stimulus being rolled out there. They, I know I took pictures of Walmart where they were selling, you know, after the first stimulus check hit, 
Walmart was ready. They had these large screen TVs. They had everything out there, you know, that you would go to the store. They had them priced at what people were, you know, they looked at value. And people were buying up brand new TVs, brand new electronics. Like people went crazy with their stimulus checks. And I think Walmart took quite a bit of people's stimulus checks out there. So good for Walmart there. Walmart's price is at 139.52. They recently hit and broke below their 50-day moving average before bouncing off of it and are currently trajectorying back upwards. So that fit that 200-day moving average has been acting as sort of a resistance level here recently, but you can see that it is generally up uptrending. So here it broke above its 200-day moving average. Tried to use it as support. Did a little bit of a double bottom here, broke out, and currently tr fell all the way down to their 50-day moving average, acted as support. Here, earnings recently came out. I believe that they recently beat earnings, so that's pretty positive. I think that they had just been, I think investors, everyone out there, you know, institutional investors, hedge funds, were kind of waiting for earnings season to kind of cycle through, and now they're kind of, all the numbers are out, they can kind of, focus on companies' valuations, and kind of make decisions. So I think Walmart has been kind of in this area here where institutional hedge funds were kind of waiting, and now all that data is out and available. And I think Walmart will see more investors kind of focus in it as they are maintaining their one-year mark and their financials are moving in an upwards direction uh, for being one of the largest retailers here within the United States. So. That is Walmart, ticker symbol WMT, with 47 years of growing and paying out dividends. Now, our last and final company is Kimberly Clark, ticker symbol KMB. This is the big beast here, have been growing and paying out dividends for the past 48 years and counting. Kimberly Clark, of course, manufactures tissues, personal care, healthcare products, global brands include Huggies. You know, we've been using Huggies for all of our children. Costco sells them, so you can get a ton of Huggies at Costco. Codex, Kleenex, Cottonell, Viva, Scott, and so many other brands there as well. And they sell, you know, not just here within the United States, but internationally as well. So Kleenex and other personal hygiene makes up $34.4 billion of their revenue. That makes up 61%. Pull-ups and other baby care products make up $11.9 billion or 21%. Uh, female feminine care makes up 9.9 .9 billion at 17.69. So, all you know, this is a again another manufacturer sim, uh, similar to Clorox. They develop a ton of different household products. I know that we use quite a bit of their personal products, quite a bit of tissue, huggies, and many other products. This is just something that people are going to use regardless of. They're not really maybe they buy it for the brand but they generally buy it because they need it. They see it on the shelves and they kind of pick it up. I don't know, they may have some brand loyalty as well with this company. So market cap, you know, when you compare this to a Clorox, I think Clorox is also pretty small. Let's see here, Clorox is at a 22 billion. So yeah, it's about double what Clorox is at, at a $45.3 billion market cap. It's 52 week range is at a low at 128.02. So just just six dollars to the low side and a high side of 160 16 cents. So that's about a $30 difference to the upside. It's one year price change is down 3.22% from just one year ago. They are currently priced at 134.18. They pay out a $4.56 dividend per share each year. Their price to book is fairly high at 87.41. But again, this isn't a book, an asset based company. This is a sales driven company it's with a ton of products out there. So we're looking at their price to sales at a 2.43, which would put this at a value, you know, at a, you know, value by opportunity uh, as far as the metrics that I've used in the past. So anything below three or depending on the business on its price to book or price to sales, it's considered a value. Forward PE is pretty low at an 18.18, so it's not in the 20s as we've seen with some of the other companies such as Clorox, Clorox, Walmart, and such. So Kimberly Clark here, whoops, Kimberly Clark, at an 18.18. Ornisar has them on a hold with a low of 127. CFRA has them as a hold as well with a price target of 145. Their report came out back in April and here recently in May 15th. 
Now, over the past three over the past three years, prices changed up 27.61%. So we'll just say 30 by three. That that's roughly a little under a 10% average churn per year over the past three years. It has pulled back off those highs, but it's more at a more reasonable level here recently with their price. Their net income is up 40%. You know, coming off those highs back in July of 2020, you know, they're more to a more stable, more consistent net income growth. Their earnings per share is in the blue at a 9.12. So, you know, this is at a 9% over the past three years. That's more consistent. That 3% growth there for their earnings per share is more consistent with this company versus, you know, being at a 12, which you put it at a 4%. So it's at a more consistent level. And their earnings per share, oh, their revenue is at 7.44. So again, that's a 2% on average per, uh, percent growth there for their revenue over the past three years. So this is a very stable, you know, manufacturer of household items. So it's a pretty stable, pretty comfortable company. You just kind of buy and hold. It's not going to swing massive in the recessions. People are still going to be buying their products regardless if we're in a market crash if we're in a market bubble it's not going to matter people are still going to be buying it for the products themselves and maybe the brands so price is at a 134.18 which puts it both below its 250 day moving average it's had it has had some issues here breaking above its 50 day moving average you can see here it dipped below and broke through but couldn't hold it broke back below this 50 day moving average broke higher here recently back in april it did break the highs breaking its 200 day moving average but it didn't hold it you know it wasn't able to kind of bounce off of it and did break back below retesting its support level back in the one uh the 120s looks like it probably broke down to 130 120 and it's kind of back in its path moving upwards you know as long as this continues to showcase that it is growing its revenue, it's growing its net income, its earnings per share is moving in line with its estimates. You know, over the next five, 10 years, this company's price will remain pretty consistent at that return of, you know, eight to 10%. Is this, you know, is Kimberly Clark's average return over the long term? So that's what I'm focusing on. You know, you're buying these companies at a fair valuation and over the long term, they're going to net you a nice average return of anywhere from eight to 10%, which is right in line with the total market. So for our last slide, this is the Vanguard S&P 500 ticker symbol VU. Here we have their dividend in the purple. So they pay out 126 per share each. I think that's each quarter. So, you know, they kind of fluctuate. Here we have their price in the orange at 182. So here, if you're buying into the total market or if you're buying into the S&P 500, you're essentially buying it at these 52 week highs. Whereas if you're buying some of the companies that we kind of discussed in this video, you're buying them kind of mid, not at 52 week lows. You know, I think Kimberly Clark was near in 52 week low, but the majority of them were kind of in the middle. Here, if we take a look at their past 10 years, you have in the price change, their Vanguard is up 212%. So divide that by 10. That gives you your average turn over the past 10 years of 21.10%. But that has had a huge boost between 2020 and 2021. So the average turn had been roughly over the past 10 years, about 12% on average. So if we look at Qualcomm, when I did the 10 year change, over the past 10 years, its price has changed 12.7% on average per year over the past 10 years. Its dividend has grown on average up 21.6%. Apple had a 10-year growth rate on average of 52.4% with a dividend growth rate of 13.2. Merck had a price change on average of 11.1, .1, dividend of 7.11. Lorox had an average one year price change of 15.8% over the past 10 years. Its dividend has grown 8.5% on average per year. Nextera was up 39.8% on average over the past 10 years, and its dividend had grown on average 18% on average per year. Walmart 15.9% on average per year with dividend of 5%. Kimberly Clark 10.5 with the dividend growth of 6.29 and VU 
you know, I like to base everything against Vu. You know, Vu is there currently really high at 21.2% on average per year over the past 10 years. And, you know, that last year has really pushed it higher. Uh, and its dividend average has growth um, and has grown 12.15% on average per year. So all these other companies here not trading near their 52-week highs, which may have put them really close to the average return of the S&P 500. But because you're not buying these companies here listed at all-time highs, their average return is slightly lower just because they pulled back off those highs. So they're still really good. You know, Apple is over here at a 52. But if you're looking at the average for the majority of these companies, it's all double digits. You know, there's nothing here that's below 10% on average per year over the past 10 years. So I think that these are all really great companies overall. And of course, I, I am a buying holder of Apple. I recently bought into Merck. I recently bought into Clorox. I, th I believe I own Walmart in one of the portfolios. I also own Kimberly Clark and I do own ticker symbol VU as well. So there's only a few companies here that I do not own, which are next arrow and Qualcomm, but Qualcomm actually looks like a reasonable company, maybe diversify into some technology a little bit more that offers a good certain yield, has some really good upside potential and is currently fairly valued. So let me know down in the comment section below again, did you enjoy these styles of video? Was it too much information? Was it not enough information? Let me know if you're holding any one of these companies Remember to smash the thumbs up button, make it blue if you did enjoy this content. If there's anything I can change or add in the future to these videos, let me know down in the comment section below. It was a nearly 50 minute video. So that is a ton of information. Maybe I should just stick with three to four companies versus seven. But I felt that all 70 of these companies needed to kind of be put out just in case, you know, investors are interested in finding some fairly valued dividend companies that are also growing their revenue net income and earnings per share over the past several years and will continue to grow over the next several years as well. So that is it for this video. If you are brand new to the channel, have not yet subscribed, go down below, hit the red button to subscribe, make it great, hit the bell to be notified every time we release a brand new video. And of course, give this video a thumbs up, make it blue. It lets me know though that you enjoy these videos, helps out the algorithm, kind of push out this content. And overall, just lets me know that you appreciate you know, this video. So that is it. Thank you all for tuning in. If you guys made it all the way to the end, drop a comment in the section. Just say, hey, I made it to the end. And that is it. Thank you all for tuning in. I will see you guys next time. Have a great day. Bye-bye.